So I thought I'd return to this Waveshare RP2040 Plus today. If you remember, I'd got a little timer on here that I did in the last video. And uh, what I wanted to do was to see what it's going to be like using a lipo cell on here. So I've got an old Garmin watch here, or the inside of it, and it stopped charging for some reason. It might be that the cell's gone kaput, but I've taken the cell off it. And I'm just going to try and use this to power this board if that works. I just checked that my code's still working. So let's just take the power bank, see if I can get a reaction yet. So if I use this cable, high-end phone cable, it seems to work okay. I had some trouble You just using a standard cable on it. It didn't want to work. Just tried that. I've got a, a shorter cable that I got here. I don't know whether this isn't a PD cable or something. Let's just try it with that. It wasn't working earlier. But yeah, so... The cable's got a lot to do with it. It might be something that's within the cable. Maybe some resistors that stop it delivering the charge. But anyway, so uh, if I try it with that, it starts the timer. So that's good. Amazon arrived and I was able to buy a lot of these JST MX125 connectors for a small amount. So here's one of them. I want to put that on there so that I can plug the lipo straight in. You notice that when I've cut this, actually I need to just tin the wires. Okay, so that's tinned both of those wires. I'm going to have to do it again, aren't I? I should have thought of that beforehand. But notice that I've cut the wires a little. I've cut them offset, which means that I'm not going to short the cell by just leaving it around. Obviously, if that touches metal, it will short the cell. And I'm not sure of the quality of this cell either. I think it was the charging connections that went on this this little watch that I used. Let's cut these to match. So I can Let's tin those as well. And connect them up. Okay, so now I've soldered those together. These aren't going to short which is good. However, I still might short on something else. So let's get a little bit of captain tape and just wrap them around there. So that should keep them out of trouble now. So let's try. Now we don't know the status of this battery at all. So I'm going to just try plugging it in as it stands. Quite difficult to get in. Just check that this was uh, oriented the correct way. But you can see there just on the side of that, there's a little plus. Hopefully you can make that out. That goes in with the red wire and I've connected red to red and black to black. So let's try powering it up from there. Not surprisingly, that hasn't started the program up because yeah, I'm expecting that this battery is going to be dead anyway. So I suppose what we have to do now is charge it. I mean, first of all, if I apply power to it, this is theoretically... It says that this chip allows the RP2030 to charge at the same time as it is running, as it's powering the device. So, I mean, we can only tell by doing this. All right, so timer equals naught. Now, if I unplug it, has that given any charge to this device here? Well, I don't know if you notice that a little bit. Now, that could be capacitors on there. But I think the only thing that I can do now is just wait and see. So let's leave this on here. I'm going to wait for about 60 minutes, I think, because these uh, little watches charged up really quickly anyway. I mean, there's hardly any energy capacity in these little cells anyway. So let's see whether this resurrects this cell, whether I can get some power out of it. So I'll see you in 60 minutes. So approximately an hour later, well, we look at this about 64 minutes later. I did come and check on this. This battery's not got hot at all. I mean, it's very, very cold in the cave at the moment. But yeah, I think the only heat on that battery is made from my fingers. So if this doesn't work, it could be that this battery's failed and it was worth a shot and an experiment. But let's unplug it and see how long the display lasts for. Okay, so that's good. So we've put some charge in it because before that was going straight away. So is that battery charged? Well, for this experiment then, let's do this. Let's 
disconnect oh actually can i can i click reset let's click reset no oh, sorry i was clicking the boot this is reset over here so let's click reset so that's set the timer to zero so whatever this charge is that i've put in i'm now going to leave this and then come back to it so it's at naught at the moment i'll come back to it and when it's when it's off i'll then plug into it and see how long that charge lasted oh well that didn't last long at all but anyway let's have a look at it if i plug it in and let's see when i open the file up how long we've got all right that wasn't when i said 20 20 uh, minutes it was 23 minutes as you can see from the file here I mean, to be honest, this, this battery might have had it anyway. I mean, it's funny experiments to do. Here's another battery which has got a better charge on, but I've uh, attached a, a lipo charger onto that, a separate one. So that was out of another device I've got. And I think I've got a pair of old headphones, rechargeable headphones here. Uh, that um, cell looks a bit fat as it is, but... Maybe that's uh, three. That's three twenty milliamp hours, one point eighteen watts. So how, who knows what this is? But I'm going to leave this on overnight and see how much charge we can put into it overnight. So this would be no on overnight. This should be as fully charged as it gets. Don't know. It might have recovered a little bit now, but uh, so I'll reset this, unplug it from the power, and see how long it lasts. Well, forty-two minutes. This is already doing better than previously. So this is run out. I reckon it was over an hour, but not uh, not a lot more than that. But let's connect it up and see. Connect to it. Open the timer file. <laughs> 59 minutes. All right. So it beat the previous score. I was expecting the lipo controller on this to cut off at the point that the battery gets below a certain point it would have a minimum voltage that it has to run up um, so i'm expecting this to see a charge when i first started using it it was completely dead uh, when i put uh, the meter on positive i did get a slight digit change but not a lot so i'm hoping if this works correctly let's see whether i can pick up a, a voltage on this now so i'd expect this not to be a dead cell anymore yeah so 3.8 so this seems to be working then anyway so yeah this has stopped it going too low and that's what i would have expected it to happen so that's quite interesting i think i'm going to modify this program so that when you restart it it opens the timer file and displays that on the screen so that i don't need a computer to look at it again so now we know that the file's there so i need to open the file for reading i think and then pull stuff in from the files okay so we definitely need this line here um to open the the file to begin with i'll put this up the top i think we'll i need to tab those in i think we'll need a, a variable previous time equals nothing at the moment so I'm going to open the file to start with. I'm going to assume it's there. I probably should put error trapping on here, but I'm not going to because I know the file's here at the moment on this Pi. So I'm just going to open it. If we don't put W after it, it opens it just for reading. And I think if I do read, that will do it. But then I need previous time there. I mean, yeah, so I think that should do it. But I need to make sure I write that to the screen as well add an extra bit let's assume so so let's say the y i'm going to set that to well let's say 16 one of these might overwrite the other and take previous time there and write that so i'm hoping that will put the timer at the bottom of the screen so who knows let's try it see what this does so i need to connect the pi before it's overwritten it let's check whether i can connect yes that's connected and let's run that all right so can i convert string to int so where's that that's line 14 so read previous time or do i need that actually i think i've got to do previous time i'm just going to unplug this so it doesn't overwrite it so previous 
time mixing my languages I think so yeah so previous time read that from F hopefully that will give me the contents of the file and put it in previous time let's try that one then and of course because this happens before the loop it should trigger it straight away before it gets into the timer part of the loop and so stop and run it I think what I'll do is I will save it as well file save as just to make sure that's what I'm actually running and try that so run that well that's not showing previous time unless one's overwriting the other and so let's just call that previous let's call that previous no file save as I'm going to save it as the timer.py instead let's just try running that so stop run just to make sure it's doing the other one right so why doesn't that work let's just check i haven't done something silly this updates the time string but that's okay we want that to update oh no i know what i have done something silly okay so let's just i'm just not outputting it am i so let's copy that back up here previous oh and that's previous that won't help as well what was happening it was going to sleep as soon as i turned it on so that wasn't going to do anything was it so i wasn't actually writing it to that screen had i waited 60 seconds it would have got it and got the previous one because it stored it but that never happened so let's try that one again so let's just run that there we go so 59 minutes so that's put the previous one so i think i'll let's move that down a bit that was at 16 so let's try and put it at 24 for both of these now after it resets and it's run a minute after it's reset it'll show me that all right so that seems to work so let's just save that again as the main file save as uh, main.py to make sure that that's the one that runs when I start the other thing I wanted to do is just do a little tick to show that it was on because this has got no power light so I wanted to show it was running somehow so let's remember how we do that i've got machine in i need that and i need to define the lead and i think the lead's at one of these if i'm very unlucky the lead's probably the pin that i'm using up here for the uh, i squared c so let's see whether this works so there's the code i've already got pin in so i think i've just got to do that so will that turn the leg on the lead on let's stop that run it again okay so that turns the lead on so we know then that that's working but I'd like the lead actually to flick maybe every second or so. So if I want to do this every second, I've got to replace that time sleep 60 here. So let's do for I in range 60. And this is going to slightly mess the, um, mess the timing out, but it's only going to be a little. So let's say sleep one. So it sleeps for a second and then it goes. Let's put the lead toggle down here. So I'll do a lead leg toggle lead toggle so that should very briefly turn the lead on i don't know whether this will work well, let's see whether this makes the lead flicker barely barely visible can i do sleep for less than I do slight sleep 0.9 and then lead leg toggle and let's do sleep 0.1 no idea whether that will work let's try All right, it's going the, the wrong way around, but that's what I want it to do. So that should do that for 60 seconds. So let's first, when I first run the program, let's make the lead off because I want the lead to be off most of the cycle. So let's try that. That's better. So every so often that just pings. I mean, I could actually reduce that even more. Let's set that to 0.2 and this is messing my timing up a little bit but let's then set that to nine eight that should do a teeny little blip that's better so there you go there's uh file operations so i'm playing about with the lipo charger which has definitely worked so this is an interesting device um, but it is very cold in the cave at the moment. I think maybe the next project will be cave temperature. And let's see how good the onboard temperature in here is. I've got a feeling it might not be fantastic, but maybe that's for the next video. Please thumbs up if you like this and subscribe. Okay, bye.